Okay, so firstly, thank you very much to Adam for inviting me here today and giving me the opportunity to talk to you all. And, and thank you all for coming. Um, so far, this is, uh, I'm really enjoying today. Um, so thank you. Um, so as Adam says, um, I'm going to talk very briefly about a project on which I'm currently working uh, at the University of East Anglia with Professor George Mackay. Um, and the project is in collaboration with the EFG uh, London Jazz Festival. It's called The Impact of Festivals. Uh, it's funded by the Arts and Humanities Research Council uh, and their Connected Communities programme. Um, one of the project outputs is going to be a history of the London Jazz Festival, uh, which will be starting its 25th uh, anniversary celebrations in 2017. Uh, the other major output, and, and that's what I'm going to be talking to you today about, uh, is this literature review of the impact of British music festivals. Um, so I'm going to speak for around about seven minutes. Uh, the reason the talk's called 2020, it was going to be 20 slides of 20 seconds, but I'm just going to use the clicker. So it's going to be about 6.7 6 minutes precisely. Uh, I'll take a few questions perhaps at the end if anyone has some, but I'm aware that uh, this is a very brief int introduction and we're all very excited about talking about secondary ticketing um, at, uh, at three o'clock. And we'll have a short break after me as well. So without further ado, Okay, so, it works. Festivals are at the heart of both British music and the British music industry. They form an essential part of the worlds of rock, classical, folk and jazz, and they form regularly occurring pivot points around which musicians, audiences and festival organisers plan their lives. So based on a review of both academic and grave literature, our report um, from Glyndebourne to Glastonbury, the impact of British music festivals, uh, we identify eight areas in which festivals have had impact, and that's economically, socially and culturally, uh, and about which I'm, I'm now, I shall now briefly talk. So first, it's the significant economic impact of British music festivals across Britain. We heard from Jonathan Todd earlier on, um, and based on figures by UK Music, uh, UK festivals are currently generating £1.7 billion of direct and indirect spending from music tourism alone. They're attracting 2.2 million tourists and they're sustaining over 13,500 jobs. Um, a number of economic impact assessments exist for a wide variety of festivals, many of which are included in, in our report. I should say that the differing methodologies used by each study make cross-comparison difficult, but I think you can certainly say that music festivals are certainly presented as having significant direct and indirect <coughs> economic impacts. Glyndebourne, for instance, uh, generates £11 million of GVA for East Sussex's economy every year, while the total gross direct spend for the 2007 Glastonbury Festival was estimated at over £73 million. I'm sure that's gone up uh, in, in the, in the uh, intervening years. A related economic impact has been on uh, urban generation. The Glasgow Jazz Festival, uh, for example, has been a key part of the regeneration of the Merchant City area of Glasgow, particularly with the development of the old fruit market venue, which you, which you can see here. Another impact is on placemaking and tourism. It's a wonderful photo of the uh, Sidmouth Festival. Um, festivals have been, become ubiquitous within local and national marketing campaigns. Music festivals of, often contribute to a positive image of a locale, both internally to its residents and externally to visitors, and he hence attract people to the air area. Uh, in the impacts can be individual and social, um, as Simon was saying, sometimes transformative or even spiritual. Motiva motivations for attending music festivals are rarely purely about the music, however. Um, so factors may be social, renewing old ties, for, for example, or even making new ones. Thinking about the literature on the health impacts of festivals tends to highlight either their positive impact on well-being and health or alternatively on the sometimes negative impacts of festivals, for example, by alcohol or drug overconsumption uh, or even one report which looked at soft tissue injury from flying bottles coming at you uh, in the festival arena. Um, there's also the, um, the, the impact on, on health providers and hospitals uh, in local areas. Uh, musicals, fe music festivals can be sites for musical experimentation and what can be called cultural dating, putting together 
two artists who perhaps not, had not played to, together previously. And this can be between genres and between musicians. Uh, and importantly for musicians, festivals um, become a, sites for, uh, that can have a real impact on their career, both in terms of building fan bases, as we've already heard, but also increasing the chances of further festival bookings. By putting um, I've played at Glastonbury Festival on your CV, it, it, it imbues a certain status um, to you as a, as a musician. The mediation of festivals has also had an impact. Um, images of the proms and Glastonbury, for example, export ideas of Britishness around the world, but they also push the festival concept into the national consciousness, acting as a promotional tool for other festivals more broadly. Everybody thinks festivals. Music festivals, they also have environmental impacts, many of them less than positive, both locally in terms of pressure on local infrastructure, such as litter and need for more policing, and also globally in terms of um, carbon footprint related to travel by festival goers and musicians. Uh, festivals may also have direct local environmental impacts on flora and fauna. Research into the impact of the Brinkburn Summer Music Festival on bat emergence, so please that work. Uh, they fascinating found that, that bats left the venue, which is Brinkburn Priory, up to 47 minutes later on festival nights. <laughs> Let's see, I've, I've read a lot of very interesting, <laughs> very varied research. Um, music festivals uh, are or have been remarkable sites for experimenting with utopian ideas and for exploring and teaching about alternative lifestyles and practices. And they've also been sites for social and political debate and also sometimes even action. For example, the Bewley Jazz Festival of the late 1950s and early 1960s was closely linked via the jazz musicians and, and fans to the Aldermaston CND marches. Bewley was also the site of the Battle of Bewley in 1960 between fans of trad and modern jazz. Some festivals have faced opposition by the state, uh, and the form of music often matters as to, as to the degree of such opposition. So the frivolity of festivals can sometimes mask deeper socio-political issues around class, around race, religion, gender, sexuality. As the report shows, there's been an increasing amount of academic interest around festivals and their impact from a variety of disciplines, but there are many gaps within the current literature need for more research, uh, including a need for more work, particularly on, um, I think, the negative impacts of festivals. Um, and in our report, we've included some recommendations for future research. We've also looked at how academic research has impacted on festivals, um, from providing economic assessments to providing opportunities for public engagement, research collaboration and debate. Um, as I've already mentioned, I'm currently the uh, EFG London Jazz Festival's researcher in residence. Um, so I'm having a wonderful time uh, trying to piece together the, the jigsaw puzzle of the London Jazz Festival history. So just, I'll, I'll start to finish now. The, uh, from the economic impact of the Edinburgh festivals to the experience of festival goers at, say, a Gilbert and Sullivan Festival or the Nottingham Carnival, the sheer breadth of perspectives in the literature highlights the way that festivals have really captured the imagination of researchers in Britain and around the world. Finally, I'd just like to draw your attention to the annotated bibliography which accompanies a report which you can download from our project website at the impactoffestivals.wordpress.com slash project uh, dash outputs. Uh, and this inc includes information about each piece, piece of literature if you wish to explore this fascinating and massive topic in more depth. Um, I should say that copies of this report, there should still be some available um, either on that table out or outside by the food. Um, Thank you for your time. Are there any questions? I just have a couple of minutes for questions and then we'll have another break before this afternoon session. Yes, Simon. How, if you're comparing um, Britain with another country, mm. do other countries have the same number of festivals or more or less? Or? Yeah, I think it's, it's so interesting looking at how Britain compares uh, internationally um, and also the role of the states, as we've already mentioned. Um, in, in whether or not that funding the festivals or promoting the festivals. Um, when I was in Finland, for example, earlier in the year, they have, they, they kind of group all the different festivals together in, across different genres. So there's classical festivals are, are put in with rock festivals and folk festivals. And there's, there's, there's sort of less competition between them. Whereas in this country, I think we have 
more festivals and they tend to be more kind of um, if they group if they do group together it's generally around perhaps genre or sort of other other things so um so yes i think the <laughs> the british festival market i think is certainly seems to be the, the American, I don't know, it's just it's kind of easier to talk about other, other markets. The American festival market, I think, is, 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 is sort of catching up slowly with the British one. And I know there's always been a sort of festival ping pong, if you like, between the States and here, Woodstock and then Glastonbury, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that the, um, I, think, I think it's really important to understand the, the broader economic, social and cultural conditions in each country, to understand how their festival market has developed in the way it has. Um, I don't know if that answers your question. No, I just mean that Finland seems to have a lot of them. Yeah, yeah, it does. And I, 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 I would, sorry, yes. Um, I was just saying, do you think the definition of festival has really broadened as well over, especially mm. the last 10 or 15 years, where the word festival now just seems to be attached to anything that goes on in a field? It's either got stock or fest. <laughs> and also, like, you know, four or five venues putting on some bands in, in, a, in a city centre on the same night, then that can be called a, a festival. So. Absolutely, and I think this raises a broader point about this kind of festivalisation of culture. Um, and, and I think that, uh, speaking to some people, they've, they feel that, that kind of making everything a festival actually devalues the notion of festival. But I think coming back to the definition of festival, we... we I've, I've been thinking about festivals from, I mean, I, I first went to Glastonbury at 15 and, and I've been sort of obsessed with festivals ever since. But the definition of festivals is something that just keeps coming back and back and back because exactly where do you draw that line? Um, we were talking about Glyndebourne, which is a, a, it is a music festival, it's an opera festival, but it takes place in a venue, uh, in, a, in an opera house, in a, in a country estate. And we're talking about that compared to Glastonbury, which takes place in a big field, is not a permanent fixture. We're talking about the London Jazz Festival, which takes place in venues which are there all year round. So how do you kind of draw a box around those things and say, these are all festivals? So we have actually come up with a kind of tripartite um, definition in, in our introduction. Um, and we've said greenfield events, which predominantly program music, often involving camping, open air consumption and amplification. Venue-based series of live music events linked by theme or genre, usually urban, and street-based urban carnival. But even that starts to, you know, you can always find examples that don't quite fit. So, yeah, I think it's, and, it's, and, it, and like you say, it's something that's changed as, as, as everybody wants in on the, on the festival train. Shall I take another question or should we finish? Yeah. Hi, Paul. Yes, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Uh, Paul Reed, Association of Independent Festivals. Uh, just to follow up on on that point, really, we we came up with a with a definition because we were having similar sort of problems with it. So our um, definition is anything which uses temporary infrastructure and has uh, multiple venues, whether that's stages or areas or whatever, because that then applies to you know a lot of city-based festivals still use temporary infrastructure and they are marketed as festivals. It's not necessarily just, just Greenfields, you know, your traditional definition. But yes, that's, that's quite different from the thing down my local pub calling itself a festival in a beer garden. You know, the, the, the word is, is being used out of context and I think that's unhelpful. Um, that said, I would go to Devstock, so, you know, I'll, I'll look forward <laughs> to that. But yes, that's our definition. We just needed one to work with. So it's not something that's necessarily been uh, adopted in a wider context, but we felt that we had to define it for our own peace of mind, really. Thanks, Paul. I think I think that that notion of sort of temporality, this kind of cyclical annual nature of festivals, and I think coming back to some of the the, the sort of broader themes of today, where, where we're talking about how people engage with with music, with live music, and, and changes in um, consumption patterns, where people are now kind of getting their jazz fix or their folk fix at a festival, and they're not engaging for the rest of the year. So I think there's and and the problems that that that, that can cause. And the, um, we launched the report at the Cheltenham Festival. And somebody in the audience from, a, from the folk world said that as, as the number of folk festivals has gone up, the number of folk, regular folk clubs has gone down. And now, now that's anecdotal, but it's kind of interesting that the actual impact of festivals more broadly can then have on, these, on, on, on the more sort of permanent music scenes in, in cities and, uh, and towns. 
Anyway, I'll stop there, but thank you very much for listening. Do grab a, a, a copy of the report. If there aren't any left today, then the PDF is available on the website. I hope it's useful. Thank you for your time. Thanks very much.